Before we start this video guys, just want to say, I say beta and it's actually the preview build. So if you want to enable this update, you need to be on the preview build. Just wanted to let you guys know before we start the video. Enjoy and I'll speak to you guys soon. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a new Steam Deck update that dropped last night and it looks pretty decent. It's got some new changes, some different things that are coming on. This is for the beta software. So if you guys are on stable, this won't have released to you guys yet. But you can quickly hop over to beta, check it out. And if you find you're getting more bugs, then just switch back over. I mean, it's not a big deal. You can just do that in the settings. Just click the, click the tab and it'll go from beta to, uh, to stable. I kind of had to switch to stable recently because my deck key wasn't showing up in beta. So that's also another cool tip. If you find that your deck key app isn't showing up in the beta software, then switch back over to stable and it should reappear again. Uh, you might have to reinstall it as well. Just follow the steps. It'll reinstall the newest version on my profiles video I did a couple of weeks ago now. But yeah, there we go. Anyway, back into the update video. So Steam gave us some patch notes last night. I don't know if you guys follow them on Twitter. You can get up to date information on when they're releasing a new patch. But in case you're not following them on Twitter or just want me to tell you what's, what's going on whilst you do other things, you know, whilst you just chill and relax and enjoy your weekend, just listen up and I'll tell you the information. So. So what they've actually done is they've taken the latest build of Linux and they've kind of re-imaged it into the Steam Deck UI style. So they've brought basically the updates from Linux and ported them over to Steam Deck and that includes recent changes to KDE Plasma Steam Deck's desktop mode. Full notes can be found on KDE's website. Here are a few of the highlights. New overview to see and open all Windows and virtual desktops. So this is in the desktop mode. Or if you haven't ever used the desktop mode, then this probably won't affect you. But if you ever use the desktop mode, there's some cool new things that are added now. So new touchscreen gestures, which is really nice. I know the touchscreen isn't amazing on the Steam Deck, but to have new gestures, always a nice thing. New themes and wallpapers, so you can customize the look of your desktop a little bit more. And updates to widgets and a new overview so you can see what tabs you've got open, what windows you've got open, and the virtual desktops you've got running as well. So that's a, a pretty cool little update for the uh, desktop mode. Nothing major major, but a few little tweaks and stuff there. Along with some security updates and you know the regular blah 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 update stuff. So moving on to the main game mode, so where you guys will predominantly be most of the time on your decks. You've got a new option for screen tearing. So you can actually allow screen tearing, kind of I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, but screen tearing, that sounds to me like you're disabling vSync. I'm pretty sure the Steam Deck has a built-in vSync into its um, desk, into its gaming mode. And to enable screen tearing, to me, would sound like you're disabling vSync. I don't know if that would be interchangeable to, between the two. Maybe I'm just chatting rubbish. But yeah, you can now enable screen tearing. And although that sounds like a weird thing, like why would you want to enable screen tearing? But for some reason in some games, um, disabling VSync can also make the game run a bit smoother um, and you can just allow it to get better performance, I guess. A minuscule amount of performance, that is. But at least they're giving us the option to enable screen tearing and just little tweaks and stuff like that. It's always nice to see if you want to do a little bit more, like a deep dive into the settings and tweak games to how exactly you want to tweak them to. So they've also made a big change to performance level two. So performance level two, as you can remember, is quite a fat chunky box. It now displays more across the horizon on the top of the screen. So instead of it being taking up like a big chunk of that left hand corner of your screen, it now takes up more of the top of your screen instead of that big chunk in the left. So you get more screen real estate while still allowing for all the data and stuff to be showed at the top. And a really nice little option as well. So basically, this is for games running 16 by nine. A really good example of that is Persona 5. As you can see, we've now got the bar going across the top. It fits nicely in them 16 by nine gaps. Instead of it being on the screen, it just runs across the top. So it makes use of the empty area, which is really nice. So I'm not massively knowledgeable when it comes to this kind of stuff, but They've re-enabled trim for the internal drive as well as supported external storage devices, improving write performance. So to me, trim sounds like you're trimming the excess data in your internal storage to get rid of all the cached crap that you don't need anymore and therefore making your internal space write performance a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. 
I'm not the I'm not the most like in depth of tech guys. I like to think I know a little bit about tech, but when it comes to these technical terms like trim and stuff, I would love to do a bit more research on it. But to me, it just sounds like you're trimming off the excess data into in your internals, maybe cutting away some of the cached stuff that doesn't need to be there. Anyway, that is now being re-enabled. And you can also trim whenever you need. There's a button that allows you to trim whenever you need. I don't know like how often it will do it other than other when you do that. It says it will do it periodically. Um, maybe you don't need to run that all the time, but the fact that it's there and just can do it in the background and maybe just help your Steam games run a bit nicer, enable you to download things quicker, always a good thing. So it has a new button as well in the system and then advanced and then you can run the trim immediately. They've also added an eject button. So instead of you just popping it straight out and worried that you're gonna damage any content that might be open still in the background, it now has an eject button in the storage settings. So that's also really cool. I've just gotten used to popping my SD cards in and out. So I'm not really probably gonna use this. It, they seem to be working okay. I'd hate to one of my SD cards to be corrupted, especially one of my SD cards with all my emulated games on. That would be a pain in the ass to fix, but it seems to be okay for now. I don't think I'm gonna use this feature, but it's there in case you guys are worried about ruining your SD cards. We've also got some changes to input. So disabled built-in DualShock 4 and DualSense trackpad. So this is in case you're using one of the new uh, PS5 controllers with your Steam Deck. So they've changed timing of the virtual key presses to Im improve game compatibility with on-screen keyboard. That might make the on-screen keyboard work a lot nicer in game, which is needed because it can be laggy sometimes. Audio, now this is a really, really well needed update. Um, I'm considering going back into beta. Hopefully Deki follows, maybe he won't, he'll stay unstable. But the echo cancel sync problem, I don't know if you guys have ever had that, where you've gone into a game and you've tried to turn the volume up and down and it says echo cancel sync and the volume won't change. It'll just stay consistently to what it was before you were, uh, booted up the game. That has now been fixed apparently, so thank God for that because I kept having that in Lego Hobbit. In fact, it just stopped me playing it entirely because every time I opened Lego Hobbit, played a few levels, closed Lego Hobbit, it still kept the issue, so I couldn't turn the volume up and down unless I restarted the deck. So it was a really massive issue. Um, that only seems to arise in certain games, but for me it was quite happening quite often. So that echo cancel sync problem has now been fixed apparently. I like to do a bit of testing on that to see if it has actually been fixed because that's a big fix for me. Very important fix. Let me know if you guys have had that issue. It was a really weird, really weird bug that had just appeared over the last couple of months for me. Um, in Only in certain games though, which is really strange as well. So it's nice to see that Valve have noticed that and fixed that. So that doesn't appear anymore, hopefully. And it's just some general fixes to finish off. Fix the performance issue that could cause 100 milliseconds hitches during gameplay of adaptive backlight was enabled. I don't have adaptive backlight on. I kind of just keep my brightness halfway. If I'm playing at night, I'll drop it a little bit more. But yeah, I don't really keep my backlight enabled for adaptive, the adaptive stuff. Fixed issue with opening file managers if the game scope session is being restarted. This stuff's kind of like more specific fixes. Fixed issues with sleep and wake for a number of titles. That's really nice because I noticed some games uh, in Persona 5 included, if I'd left it on sleep for quite a long time, reopened it, the audio started um, having a real tinniness to it. It started having like a weird echo to it. So I kind of would have had to have restarted the game which is really weird. And on the very rare occasion, I don't know if this is something to do with Deki or one of the new updates, the game crashed after playing it again, after opening it back up from sleep after about 10 minutes. So nice to see that's being fixed as well. Fix the GPU clock settings. Sometimes I'll stick in if manually set. Fix an issue with fan controller, excessive sensor pooling, uh, polling, causing sporadic fan behavior. So that's also really cool to know. They fix some fan behavior noises, uh, uh, performance issues. And the new firmware for the docking station, fix an issue where HDMI 2 displays not detected during working boot. So it's cool that they can update the dock as well via this uh, system as well, which is really nice. And there's still a known issue which they're working on. Chinese import for the on-screen keyboard are not currently functioning correctly. So overall guys, we've not been having many massive updates on the Steam Deck as of the last few weeks, but this one is a big one. Some really cool changes. Um, 
as you can see through the video, yeah, I've tried to highlight some of the major ones just from my actual gameplay. But yeah, really, really nice update on the Steam Deck. Glad to see it's still getting supported uh, a lot more than the uh, Switch. So that's also a really nice thing to see. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll try and keep you guys up to date on the latest Steam Deck news as much as it comes out. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.